Dream Team, it's your boy D Neil back with another reaction video, guys. Here we are with the best Larry Bird versus LeBron James story ever told. Larry versus LeBron, guys, that that's going to LeBron, and that's taking nothing away from Larry Bird, nothing at all away from Larry Bird. But that matchup going to LeBron. Uh, but I, I'm excited to hear this story. Before we dive in, make sure you subscribe, ring notification bell, give the video a thumbs up so it gets uh, so it gets suggested. Let's see what we got. In the book titled "When the Game Was Ours," written by Larry Bird and Magic Johnson, That's so Michael Jordan shared his 100% honest opinion about Larry Bird. He said, "People ask me all the time who my top five players are, and when I start saying Larry, they interrupt me." They say, you gotta be kidding me. He can't play with LeBron James. I tell them, you guys don't get it. Larry is far better than any small forward who played the game. Now the lazy person would chalk that statement up to Michael Jordan being a LeBron hater. He's not even looking at the, I think he was, was looking, he looking at Michael at, Jordan. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> that Charlotte bench. I think that was a look at Michael. Right, Miami Brown was scary, dog. He had that one choke up in the finals and I would hold that against him. I will say that that is a flaw on his mark record, but Miami LeBron was to me the scariest version of LeBron James dog. Like, I think you're right. I think that's exactly what he was looking what he right was at him. But not too long ago, this was common knowledge. If you give me both these guys and you say you can start your team with either Larry Bird or LeBron James, oh, you're taking LeBron. I'm taking Larry Bird no, you're and I'm not. taking my chances. No, Thank you very not. much. You know why? Larry yes. Bird was the baddest son of gun on the planet <laughs> in a <laughs> league with Magic Johnson, <laughs> Isaiah Thomas, oh, so Dr. J. He was the best player in the world when the NBA and was LeBron's at a, when a greater the best level. In the world. It ain't the same NBA. This, 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 this sucker oh. won three straight MVPs. Let me ask you this. With, with Magic Larry Bird couldn't get through him at one point. He's the best player in the world right now. I believe he would. Oh, he'd be better than Kevin Durant. I believe. He would. Yes, no, he would. I believe he no, would. No, he wouldn't. Okay, he Larry just Bird, have if, the he, if, he, if his back didn't give out on him, if he didn't have surgery, if his body didn't fail him, talking about we're having a whole different conversation about Larry. You can't, you can't, I, I understand what he say when he brings up the injury conversation, but there is, we don't do ifs because there's a lot of ifs. My guy, favorite player of all time, was Dwayne Wade if he never had a dislocated shoulder, if his knees never gave on him, if he'd be, you know what I'm saying? He might, he'd probably be higher than where he is. And he got Mike and Kobe in front of him at his position. I'm saying he might be higher than what he is. But there's, there's no, you can't play ifs. You only play what is and what ain't. And his back, unfortunately, did give out on him. Uh, but I, I'm not mad at anybody who makes an argument for Larry Bird because people are going to feel how they feel. Uh, I didn't get to watch Larry Bird. People are going to... But some people don't like the NBA today that watched it back when Larry Bird was playing. They loved it. Uh, I seen an interview where, like, Will and Kareem was like, or not Will and Kareem, but Will and Bill Russell, they were like, I'd kill the NBA in, like, the 90s and the 80s. Like, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I would kill to play in a game, that game, and I would win even more. And so, like, it's uh, old school people and old school players are going to always say. And I, and I say that today about certain sports. I'm like, oh, it was way better back when I was a kid. It was, So I'm not mad at anybody who argues Larry Bird. And I'm not mad at anybody who's for LeBron James. At the end of the day, they're both two absolutely phenomenal basketball players who've had an incredible impact on the game. I would just choose LeBron James. <laughs> if it was my choice, I'd choose LeBron James. But I'm not mad at anybody for, for picking Larry Bird. He was literally an absolute legend of the game and is a legend of the game. Legend. I'm sorry. He, he had it all. So, Larry Bird or LeBron James? And for the record, if you ask me who I'd take over 20 years, I'd take LeBron. But if you ask me who I'd take for one season, it gets very interesting. LeBron. Because I'd take a 1986 Larry Bird season over any single season performance from any player that ever lived. And if you ask me who I'd take for ever? one game, or better yet, one shot, well, I'll let someone who actually <laughs> lived through the Bird era tell you what they think. All I know is... No, what? you're not going to... I'm not, bro. <laughs> I respect a lot of people's opinions, 
But we not going to the biggest LeBron hater out of all the LeBron haters on earth, dog. That's who we not. We not finna listen to the most biased opinion. We get it. Not that he's favorite player is Larry and he's biased for it, but he's so biased against LeBron James, dog. We not going to skip for this. Game for my life. I want Larry Joe Bird taking my last shot. That guy from French Lick, Indiana. Uh, okay, Game on the that. line, free throw, three, jump shot, whatever it was. I'll take Larry Bird any day or any night over especially LeBron James. Now, if you're over still a Larry LeBron legend James. denier, I'm about to tell you how one shot changed the course of history, helped rewrite the narrative of an entire generation, and almost made Larry Bird the undisputed greatest of all time one shot and time and time again larry bird came up clutch in the biggest situation this shot was incredible looking, looking loops it to bird a runner i heard all the stories about that shot too about him uh literally hitting the shot uh but coach caught a timeout it didn't count came back to the bench he said coach just give it to me told phoenix he's about to send him home like like we ain't going to OT like I'm about to hit this again. Then did exactly that. And he aims to inbounds for the Celtics, trailing by one, two seconds left. In the bird, he fires. He is and the Celtics. He's so cold. He's so cold. So in the 1987 NBA Finals versus the Lakers, when Larry Bird and the Boston Celtics were trying to repeat as NBA champions, Celtic Nation came to expect it. And in Game 4 at the Boston Garden, with the Celtics down 2-1 to one in the series, the game came down to the wire. Boston 4, LA 2. <laughs> out of a timeout Larry Bird as confident as ever tells his defender James Worthy exactly what he's going to do to him he would come out of a timeout I remember this one time you might have heard this before because he did it with a lot of people I had to guard him you know the play is coming but he would tell you it's coming with DJ Hanlon Mikhail's going to set up a pick for for Robert that's only to free him up to come and set a pick for me and he says if you trail I'm going to trail into the lane to a little floater he said, if you try to get over the top, he said, I'm going to pop to that corner and bust a jumper in your fucking face. <laughs> I'm like, fuck you. Man. I'm, I'm all up on it. <laughs> you know, I got his shirt tail. I'm holding it. You know, I'm yeah, like, yeah. Know. He got he, he ripping Larry Bird jersey the way he holding him, dog. Like, God dang, real. He allowed to rip the jersey? You know where I'm from. I'm from Gastonia. I mean, he ain't talking. He ain't gonna... Sure enough, man. The ball comes in, <laughs> DJ takes a couple of dribbles. I'm quick, I'm quick enough. I think I can get over the top. I, I, I get over the top, I get out there, but that's when, he pops to the corner and I'm running. He kind of waiting, you know. That's, what, that's when I was like, watching this back, I'm like, I understand why James went out there. Help defense, you gotta, you gotta go help. Do how to open shot. But at the same time, you got to know who you're leaving. You're le they, they want the ball to go to Larry. You're leaving the best cut shot maker in the game. That's who you're leaving. I would have let whoever was up top with that ball, they would have had to beat me. They would have had to make the shot because I'm not coming off Larry. So when James left, that's when every time I watch this highlight, I'm like, that's the craziest thing, James Worthy leaving Larry Bird on that play. Even though it's to go help play help defense, it's, it's understandable, but it's Larry Bird. I get out there, but he pops to the corner and I'm running. He kind of waiting, you know. Waiting. Uh, <laughs> he was an asshole. Bird with a big three-point 
Nice touch. With the Celtics up by two, Kareem comes down and gets fouled with eight seconds left. He makes the first. And misses the second. Bro, he lucky. He lucky he didn't miss that in the social media age. I tell you, cause that be LeBron and oh, the whole world never let him forget about that one free throw. He's he's the most unclutch player in the world if he misses that free throw in that moment. <laughs> so Kareem, lucky he ain't missed that in the social media age, man. And it's Lakers ball with seven seconds to go. One Celtic rebound could have sealed this game, but the ball goes out of bounds and the Lakers get the possession. And with seven seconds to go, the Lakers still had life. Just three years earlier in the 1984 finals versus the Celtics, Magic Johnson choked in a similar situation, earning the nickname Tragic Johnson. But this time he was ready. My man switched to Kareem and Kevin McHale jumped out to me. As soon as I saw Kevin, I said, oh, I'm taking him. You know, Magic puts it on the floor, a couple head and shoulder fakes, and he raised up in the air, and there was nobody that was going to get that shot. Down by one, with two seconds on the clock, Larry Bird and the Celtics find themselves in a situation they've been in oh, many dang. times before. I think this is where he missed the shot. Like, he actually, it was in and out. It was this close, dog. Four. Johnson on the inbound. Freeze. What do you think happened? And now, now let's give this happened. shot some context. For two years straight, the Boston Celtics <laughs> had the greatest home court advantage of all time. The prior year, in 1986, <laughs> the Celtics finished with a regular season record of 40 and 1. This record <laughs> still crazy. stands as the best regular season home record ever. That's insane. Yes. Better than Michael Jordan's 96 Bulls and better than Steph Curry's 2016 or 2017 Golden State Warriors. That's crazy. And if you include the playoffs, they were 50 and 1 at home. So for everyone who thinks the 96 Bulls and the 2017 Warriors are the two best teams of all time, at home, Larry Bird's 1986 Celtics were better. Let nah, that, nah, that, team might, that team ain't beating the Warriors, dog. I'm, I'm sorry, but that team ain't beating, the, ain't beating them. KD, with KD, nah. Someone asked me the other day, they said, it's the toughest arena you had to play in. And I said, uh, Garden, Boston. I said, they were almost impossible to go in there and beat because you could not make a mistake with them. Those guys made you play, and it was him. Like, he was like, a, he was a savant on the court. Like, just a savant. Like, two plays ahead on everything. And so, please, let's not forget how hard it was to go into Boston and be the team when Bird is in his prime. Unfortunately, the Celtics fell off that following year in 1987. They were 39-2 at home. So, including the playoffs, for the last two years... The Celtics were 99 and 4 at the Boston Garden up until that shot by Bird. This means statistically there was a 96% chance that that potential game winning shot by Bird was going in. Now, what do you think happened? <laughs> it well, I know what happened. happened. Bird walked Worthy all the way up, forced the denial all the way up. We've done it before. Clear everybody out, go to the ball, break to the corner. That's something. Oh my God, bro. The fact that Larry gets that clear of a shot on the last shot is always oh, is insanity to me. Like, that, that's way too open of a shot for Larry Bird to get the ball with two seconds left on the clock, dog. Like, your defense got to be better than that, big dog. Not these. These are just tough shots he's hitting. Bird, a runner. It's good! It's good! And the Celtics win it! Look, that's too open, dog. Come on. He caught it here, and as he caught it, all he had to do was turn. And just turn, and he just let this thing go. Got a wide open look, couldn't believe it. And I'm standing right there, it is straight as an arrow. And the Lakers have 
Oh. I said in and out, but a little bit too long. It's crazy because when Magic missed it, he was Tragic Johnson, but his was a lot worse. Or did he wait for the clock to run out and he just he didn't even get a shot up? I don't know. But Larry, but I would never take anything away from Larry Bird or Magic Johnson. They're both phenomenal players who really saved basketball. Uh, yeah, but I think everybody in that stadium, even the Lakers, it was ex expected that ball to go in when they left Larry say it's and The Lakers dance off the court. They were lucky because it was right on line. He looked at me like, how did you ever leave me that wide open? <laughs> I That's what you Change the whole series. Every time I watch that shot, I still think it's going in. Larry <laughs> thought it was going in. Magic thought it was going in. <laughs> Everybody Rodney thought it was going in. Everybody in the world thought that shot was going in. If Larry in, Bird dog. took that exact same shot in that exact same situation ten times, he'd probably hit nine of them. And if Larry Bird hits that shot, then the series is tied two to two. And with the next game at the Boston Garden, there's no way you can convince me that this Celtic team with the greatest home court advantage of all time, led by one of the most clutch players in NBA history, doesn't win that next home game. So instead of being down three to two, going back to LA and losing those NBA finals, the Celtics would have been up three to two. And with all of that momentum on the Celtics side, all they needed to do was win one game in LA to give Larry Bird his fourth title add another finals MVP to his collection, become the first team to win back-to-back -back titles since Bill Russell with the Celtics in the 60s, and silence all doubt on who won the Bird versus Magic rivalry. One shot could have changed everything, and the conversation about the greatest player of all time would have been very different. Larry Bird at his best, LeBron James at his best. It's crazy, it, but the, he, like I understand what he said because I was watching the interview with uh, dang, coach, coach uh, Elf. I can't remember. He's one of the greatest coaches of all time. Do with the Duke coach and North Carolina coach, uh, coach Mike Shashevsky, and I think North Carolina was it Roy Jones or something. I can't remember. Uh, but they were talking about like the difference between a great team and a championship team was one play. <laughs> it's literally one play could make all the difference. So I understand what he said. Like, yeah, if he did hit that shot, the conversation might have been changed. And but <laughs> basketball is is it's beautiful, but it's also cruel. And that shot didn't fall. And so the conversation is what it is today. But I understand one play is all it takes to change an entire legacy, dog. It is one play makes a difference between a great team and a championship team. And I felt that. Uh, oh, I got to go with Larry Joe. I got to go with Larry Joe. You take Larry Joe. Larry Joe uh, <laughs> for the win. When Reggie Miller said that, it was headline news the next day because the media fawns over LeBron James more than ever. But to many Larry legend truthers, it wasn't a surprise at all. Skip, Reggie would take Bird over LeBron. Do you concur, my friend? Of course I he do does. Concur. In a hypothetical draft, would I take him over LeBron James to start my my <clears throat> franchise? Yes, I would. And and I don't think it's even close. Now you would think that Skip Bayless, as the ultimate <clears throat> contrarian, would be challenged by his co-host for such an opinion. However. This is one of the rare things that they 100% agreed on. You know, in terms of leadership, in terms of clutch, in terms of shooting ability, and overall championship credentials, not mm -hmm. just trophies, but a mentality, Larry Bird gets the nod over LeBron James. I I'm guessing that right now about 80% of our viewing audience does not agree with either one of us. <laughs> well, that, 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 all that means is that they don't know anybody. They don't know. They don't know any better. If they disagree with us, they don't know any better. <laughs> Money time, there's no, there's no contest. He's not even in Larry Bird's class. Right. Not even close. It's not <clears throat> even close. If you like stats, 
Here's Larry Bird versus LeBron James season stats while both are at the age of 30. Larry Bird averages more points, more rebounds, more assists, and has a higher field goal percentage. So when someone asks you, what, what is Larry play Bird? Playoff stats though. Bird better at than LeBron? <laughs> you can say pretty much everything. Hold on, is he ahead of Larry Bird? No. 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 What was Bird better at? Bird's a better shooter. It's not close. Uh, I think Bird is as, as good or better as a passer. We, a much more fluid, much more uh, natural passer than LeBron James, a creative passer. LeBron James, see, like, for a superstar, he's as good a passer as anyone outside of maybe Magic and Bird. Bird was a better passer. Do Bird's know. a better rebounder. Oh. The fact is that Larry Bird didn't stay healthy, and the fact is that basketball is played so differently okay. now. When it comes down to the end of a game, in a championship series, Everybody says that. I would rather have Larry Bird have the basketball. I understand. Well, duh. I understand. Is there any way on earth you would take LeBron James over Larry Bird in the clutch? <laughs> There's no way on earth that I'd pick him over Larry Bird in the clutch. I can tell you that much. Larry Bird was not just a superior shooter from anywhere on the court, just like you highlighted. Not only was he a near 90% shooter from the free throw line, Dang. which LeBron could never brag about. But when you talk about money time, whether it's a particular juncture in the season where you're trying to position yourself for the playoffs, or you're talking about the last minutes of a game, or you're talking about the last shot in a game, or you're talking about a game seven, or you're talking about anything that, that indicates clutch, you simply can't pick LeBron over Larry Bird because you can pick almost no one in NBA history over Larry Bird. When it was money time, you knew where the ball was going, and you also knew there was little to nothing that you could do about it. It was just a matter of whether or not Larry Bird was going to make it or miss it. But even despite all of those numbers, to those who actually saw Larry Bird play, the eye test is all they need. I know no, there are I'm other numbers right. that will support you on LeBron. I may lose this, but you know what? I'm going with these, all four of them. And I watched them <laughs> the <laughs> that has Larry some of the greatest Bird. players of all time playing. I, and this isn't a diss on LeBron. Hmm. I'm not dissing LeBron. I love LeBron. We both love LeBron. Everybody appreciates how great he was. But as time passes, it's easy to forget how great Larry Bird was. No, I, so all of that said, right here, right now, Larry Bird remains the greatest small forward ever, period, end of story. Uh, like I said, once again, uh, I'm not mad at anybody who takes Larry over Brian. Um, that that that's all you're gonna take, and I'm not saying that's the wrong to say. Like Larry Bird is a literal legend, but if I'm starting a franchise, I'm taking LeBron James. I'm taking a man who's gonna be there for 20 years and still average 20 plus a game. Uh, that's who I'm going with. You feel, but. But that's just me. But uh, Larry Legend, man, as far as clutch comes, like, yeah, I've heard way too many stories about Larry Legend and clutch. But LeBron's clutch percentage is also a high clutch percentage. I know he gets a lot of flack about that, but literally, like, you look at the numbers, it's, it's, a, it's a high clutch percentage. <laughs> like, go ahead shots uh, to win the game or, like, buzzer beaters or whatever. He's up there. Like, he's not just the most unclutch player in basketball. But uh, yes, Larry Bird's literally amazing. I'll never take anything away from him. Um, but I just think LeBron James is the greatest player to ever play the game. I think he does everything on a basketball court. Like a lot of people give him crap about his defense, but I mean, he probably now his defense probably ain't the greatest. But I feel like when it's time to turn up, when it's time to hit that switch, LeBron does. And I know they're going to bring up, oh, he's only won four titles out of what? He's been to the final nine, ten times, I say. But these teams, he's, he's, he's going against very, very difficult teams to beat. Uh, but once again, I guess I'm, uh, not to make any excuses, it's an argument that people are going to make throughout the history of time. They never got to play against each other, never got to play in the same generation. So it's, it's, they played in completely different eras. So it is a hard argument to make. I appreciate both of their greatness and everything that they brought to the game. Me personally, taking LeBron. But if you personally take Larry, I'm not going to argue with you. <laughs> That's all we got. Make sure y'all subscribe, ring notification bell, get a video, a thumbs up. It's your boy, Dino, out.